By now, you should be very comfortable with creating variables and accessing those variables and changing the values of variables. But there's a downside to variables, and that is they can only hold one value. Today, we begin looking at collections. And the first collection we're going to look at is a list. Now, in other languages, we have things called arrays or array lists and also lists. In Python, we don't have arrays. But lists really are very similar to what you might have experienced as arrays in other languages. A list allows us to place multiple values into a single access point, much like the access point of a variable's name. But we can distinguish the different values inside the list by accessing different index numbers, which we've already seen working with strings. We've seen that in strings. Each character has an index number starting with zero. And it's the same with list. Lists have an index starting with zero. So I can create a list by putting the items that I want to assign to that list in a set of square brackets and have them comma separated. So here I've created my list and passed it the values 5, 3, 8, 1, 12, 7, and 8. And what happens in memory then is just like we created a space in memory to contain the variable, a space in memory is set aside to contain our list values. And those list values are indexed by the numbers 0 through 6. There are seven values there. So 5 is index 0, 3 is index 1, and 8 is index 6. If I choose to print my list, the, the output I will get are all of the values inside a set of square brackets really identical to what we use in assigning the list. But I can also access individual elements of my list. And I can do that by specifying the name of my list. In this case, I called it my list. And the index number of the value I want to access. So here I have print my list element 2. Sometimes also read as my list sub 2 or index 2. And the value that would be printed out would be 8. That's the value that's in memory in the index 2 of my list. I can also assign new values. So if I say my list element 3 equals 20, well, what happens in memory is that value of 1 that was in my list element 3 is replaced by the value of 20. And now if I print my list, we'll see it's slightly different. One of the cool things I can do is use a for loop to iterate through the items in my list. So here I have a for loop. I simply named a variable item for item in my list. And what's going to happen is it's going to go through each item of the list and use that value. So I can simply print item. And the result would be I would get 5, 3, 8, 20, 12, 7, and 8 listed down the page, each on a different line. If I wanted to sum those numbers, I could easily do that using that for loop and just simply create a running total of all the values in my list. The list is a class, and as a class, it can have methods. In fact, the list does have methods. And the first method we'll look at is the append method. And I can specify the name of the list, dot append, and in parentheses, pass it a value. So if we have our list of 5, 3, 8, 1, 12, 7, and 8, I can call my list dot append and pass it the value 14. And what happens then is in memory, we get a eighth element added, which is index seven and contains the value 14. And now if I print my list, I would see those eight values printed. By the way, with append, you can only append one value at a time. While the append method adds a value to the end of the list, we can use the insert method to add a value inside the list. And here are the two arguments I provide to the insert method are first the index where I want to insert the value and then the value to be inserted. So get back to my original list of 5, 3, 8, 1, 12, 7, and 8. I can choose my list, insert, and pass it index 2 and the value 11. And what happens then is at index 2, the value 11 is inserted and the other values move down by an index number. And so if I were to print my list, I would now get the values 5, 3, 11, 8, 1, 12, 7, and 8. There's also a remove method, and I can pass it a value that I want to have removed. 
So in this case, I might say my list dot remove and the value would be eight. And it's gonna find the first eight that it comes across and remove that element. And when it does so, the, the other elements move up by an index number. And now if I were to print, I would get five, three, 11, one, 12, seven, and eight. And there is no longer an element seven. There's also a count method and I have my list here slightly modified, 5, 3, 8, 1, 12, 7, 8, 9. And I have a variable called 8. It's going to be assigned the value of my list dot count, and I'm passing the value of 8. And what that does is checks to see how many 8s are in my list. And it comes up with 2, one at element 2 and one at element 6. And so when I print 8s, the value I would get would be 2. There's also an index method and I can pass the index method a value that I want to search for in the list. And so here I have a variable called IDX for index equals my list dot index and I'm passing the value 12. And it's going to go through the list and find the first occurrence of a 12. And it does so at element four and so it returns the four to IDX and if I print IDX I would see a four printed out. The list class has a sort method that's really useful for simply sorting a list. And so here we have our my list with values of 5, 3, 8, 1, 12, 7, 8, 9. And I can call my list.sort and it will reorganize the list from lowest to highest. And now if I print that out, I get 1, 3, 5, 7, 8, 8, 9, and 12. What if I wanted to go from highest to lowest? Well, I could sort the list and then call the reverse method. So my list dot reverse would simply reverse all the elements. So element seven becomes element zero and element zero becomes element seven and everything falls in place in between. So if I call my list dot reverse and then print that, since it was already sorted, I'm now gonna get a descending order of 12, 9, 8, 8, 7, 5, 3, 1. Built into Python is the sorted method. And in the sorted method, we can pass our list so I can print sorted my list. Now the difference between sorted and sort, sort is what we call a mutable method. It changes the list. Sorted does not change the list. The list would stay in an unsorted state in memory, but what would be printed out would be that list sorted. So it basically returns a value to itself of the sorted list, but it doesn't actually sort the list in RAM. If you wanted to use the sorted method to change my list, we could use sorted and then pass that those results back to my list. So my list equals sorted my list. Probably not that useful of a method since we have the sort method built into the list class. We've already seen the remove method, which allows us to remove a particular value from the list. But what if we want to remove a particular element? And there are two ways to do that. One is to use the pop method of the list. And we can specify the index in parentheses that we want to pop or remove. It actually returns that value into a variable. So here I have item equals my list.pop3. I'm going to pop element three, which is our one. The one would be placed an item. And you might want to do something with that item variable. And so the one goes away and the other values move up by one index number. So if I print my list, I would now get 5, 3, 8, 12, 7, 8, and 9. And that element 3 that earlier held the value of 1 has been popped or removed. The other way I could do this is also use the delete method of Python. And I could say del, del, and then tell it what I want to delete as far as the index value of my list. So again, I could say del my list element 3. And the result will be the 12 goes away and the 7, 8, 9 move up into elements 3, 4, and 5. Element 6 now no longer exists. There's also a clear method that will clear all of the values in our list and actually does away with all the elements. Um, and if we were to print that, we just get a pair of square brackets showing that it's an empty list. We can use the length method of Python to find out how many items are in a list. And so here, if I take size equals len 
my list, and then I print size, the value would be eight that's printed out because there are eight elements. Remember, we start counting with one uh, for the length, but there are elements zero through seven, which are a total of eight elements. Python has a unique feature in working with list in that you can do reverse indexing. So if I want to know what the last element is, I can index it as minus one. So XYZ equals my list minus one. If I print XYZ, that'd be the value of nine. Nine is in the seventh element, the very last element. If I do XYZ equals my list minus three, now I'm going three elements from the end, and that's gonna be the value seven, that's in element five. Thus far, we've been working with lists that contain integers, but lists can also contain strings or float values or even Boolean values. So to demonstrate that, I've set up a list here of students with names of Pat, Leslie, Jerry, Terry, Jackie, Bobby, Sam, and Jess, and I can reference those in the exact same way, and all the methods that I just showed you in working with integers apply to list of other data types. So if I say print students element one, what I would get is the name Leslie. Python even goes a step further in that I can also have a list of mixed data types. So here I have students, and I'm placing in it elements pat, a string, 34, which is an integer, Jerry string, 17 integer, Jackie string, 24 integer, and Sam string, 22 integer. And then I can use a loop to go through those. And here I'm gonna go through a loop from range zero to where the length of students is, minus one, that's gonna give me the last element, in this case it'd be seven, length would be eight. So I'm going from this case zero to seven, but I'm gonna go by twos. And what I'm gonna print then is two elements together. Placeholder zero in my print statement is going to be students element i, and placeholder one is gonna be students i plus one, or the next element. Since I'm skipping every other element when I go through my loop, I'm gonna get pairs doing it this way. And the result is what I get printed out is Pat is 34 years old. So we're simply specifying the integer after each name is their age. So Pat is 34 years old, Jerry is 17 years old, Jackie is 24 years old, and Sam is 22 years old. So that's basically all about lists and how to manipulate and manage lists. Let's go on to Python and actually do a couple examples. If you just jumped into this video and haven't seen the prior videos to this, I invite you to check out my Python playlist of videos. And if you'd like to be alerted to future videos that I create, you can click my picture up in the top right and subscribe to the channel.